everyone, welcome to Parkinson's Daily Exercise with Danica. Today we're going to do some basic Pilates moves for core strength and hip mobility. So we'll go ahead and start lying down. So take a moment to get down on the floor. If you aren't quite flexible enough in that head and neck to put the head all the way on the floor, maybe grab a towel roll or a pillow to make your head a little bit more comfortable so you're not having to hold your head up off of the floor. So let's go ahead and get started. Grab that pillow or towel roll if needed, and we'll go ahead and lie down on our back. So we'll lie down comfortably, and it also is helpful to maybe watch this video one time through, so the whole time we're doing the exercises, you're not having to look at the phone or the TV or computer. So maybe looking through this video once before um, actually doing it. So I'm not going to take the pillow out because for me, it's more comfortable on the floor. So from here, we're gonna roll the pelvis forward and back. I always like to start with some awareness and breath work. So with Pilates, it's a deep inhalation through the nose as we rock the pelvis forward. And it's a deep exhalation through the mouth as we tighten and engage that core, pressing the low back toward the floor. Let's do two more. Inhale, roll the pelvis forward. Exhale, roll the pelvis back. Inhale, roll the pelvis forward. Exhale. Then we find neutral. So in between those two tilts, we want a very strong and engaged torso here. So we're going to float the left leg up and then the right leg up to tabletop. So this is a position where we'll hold static so in place for about 10 long deep breaths. So breathing in deeply through the nose and deeply through the mouth. Be mindful that the knees are stacked over the hips, the feet are flexed. So we're strengthening in our hips, we're strengthening in the core. Our chest is open broad and our neck and shoulders are as relaxed as we can be. So again, if we feel really too much tension in the neck, maybe rolling up a towel or putting a pillow under the head. Try to keep the gaze straight up to the sky. We should feel that core warming up. Let's take a few more deep, long breaths in. One more long, deep breath. Now we'll pull the knees into the chest because this always feels good as a nice release in the low back. Of course, as we're doing Pilates, we want to make sure that we're never straining in the low back or the neck. So whenever we need to stop, take a break, pull the knees in, maybe even roll the knees around, massage that low back, and then take it back to tabletop. So we're going to hold here from, from this tabletop position. Point the toes, we're transitioning into toe taps. So now we're getting a little bit of movement in those hips while that core is stabilizing. In Pilates, we want to always remember that our powerhouse is our torso. Those muscles from the hips to the shoulders on the front and back side of the body. So we want to make sure that powerhouse is strong and then that movement through the extremities, through the arms and legs, are fluid and controlled. Let's do two more on each side. And then we'll pull the knees back into the chest because that always feels really good. Let the head, neck, and shoulders relax. And then we're back to tabletop. So we're holding here. Now, of course, if the arms or if the legs ever get feeling a little bit heavy and we want to take a break and bring them down to classic Pilates, we can keep the feet grounded. This one is a good one. If you don't want to do tabletop, we can keep the feet grounded to the floor. We're going to place our palms facing up and just slide our arms straight out to the sides and then slide them back down. So I'm going to lift my legs back to tabletop for a little bit more challenge. Slide those arms out. Now we can begin to slide the arms maybe a little bit higher, but if we feel any tension in the neck or shoulders, we'll slide the arms right back down. So we want to take them as high as we comfortably can, 
without having to move that upper back or over arch that back. So you want to stay engaged and then slide down. So this is a very good one for strengthening not just that torso, but we're releasing in the shoulders for posture. Good, check in with the head and neck, make sure they're relaxed. Let's do that one more time. We'll slide them up. Good, and then sliding back down. Let's bring our feet down and ground it. Now we're gonna let the knees fall out to the sides. Tight and strong in that core as we pull the knees back in to flat feet. Relax the arms by the sides, let the knees fall out, soles of the feet together. And then we're going to squeeze those belly muscles and inner hips together to bring the knees back to center. Allow the knees to fall apart, those soles of the feet are together, and then we'll bring the feet back to center flat. Two more. This one's really good for releasing in the inner hips and the low back. So we're really working on core strength and hip mobility here. Let's do this one more time. Take the feet and knees out, feet are together, and then we'll bring those feet grounded. Now we'll bring the arms down a little bit closer to the sides. Their shoulders are down. We're gonna take that left leg now straight to the sky. So if the knee is bent here, let's work on that flexibility and strength and try to straighten the knee. Maybe we'll bend it a little bit and then straighten it back up, bend and straighten. Now sometimes if we're in this position, we tend to get more tension in the head or neck, so please use a towel roll or a pillow if necessary. We're gonna get that knee as straight as possible. Point those toes and draw a circle around. So now this circle isn't a wild circle. Our hips aren't rolling or moving at all. The only thing moving is that leg. So we wanna stay grounded, it's very core intensive. If this exercise feels easy, you're likely using momentum. So it really shouldn't be easy. It's if we're, our whole entire body is stuck in cement, the only thing that is moving is that left leg. Check in and make sure it's super straight and long. Let's do that one more time, up, out, and around. And then we'll bring that leg back to center and circle back the other direction. We always wanna take that circle in both directions. You should feel that strengthening and mobility in that hip. So it should be pain-free as well. So we don't want any added tension or sharp pains in that hip. So we want to strengthen the core. Think of lengthening from the hip bone all the way up through those toes. That thigh is strong. Please check in and make sure that that right knee isn't falling out to the side to counterbalance. We want our core working to counterbalance. And then we'll release and pull that knee into the chest, relax the low back, relax the head, neck, and shoulders. And release, so now we'll ground the left foot, the right leg is straight up to the sky, we'll point those toes. Maybe a few knee bends to straight if necessary, knee bend to straight. You probably just heard my chihuahuas there, they're kind of playing on the couch over there. Two more, and then we'll hold this one straight and long, keeping that core tight, and then we'll add a circle here. So we wanna stay grounded, keeping that knee straight as we circle around, inhaling up, exhaling out and around. So we don't want any movement in that opposite hip, we want it to stay grounded to the floor. So that powerhouse is working, and then we're adding the mobility and strength down through the hips and legs. Last two. Think of that length in the leg, core is tight. Now let's switch directions. We always wanna get both directions. Make sure that knee is as straight as we can take it. Core is strong. Good, so we're really working those hips. Why do we want strong and flexible hips? Well, for mobility. <laughs> the main reason is for walking. We need mobile and strong hips to help us move through, through space, but we also want mobile hips 
for maybe a little pain reduction, strong hips. If we're feeling tightness, that sometimes can, can relate into soreness and irritation. So we want those hips to be loose, but we also want them to be strong. Last one. Very functional movement. Let's pull it back in and just really relax. Let the head maybe roll side to side and release all the way down. Let's stretch those legs out and then reach those arms out long to the sky. From here, we're going to take that left leg up and just hold behind the thigh, pull it in. Reach both arms overhead, so we have that full body stretch, and then pull that right leg up. Now this one, we're strengthening the torso, but we're also working that mobility through the upper body and through those hips. So we wanna pull it up and reach it. Inhale, exhale. Inhale. One more on each side. Inhale. Exhale. And release. Let's go ahead and roll all the way over onto our sides and push up to a seated position. And we'll roll those shoulders back here. So after we're lying flat on the floor, on our back for a while, we want to just move to that next position and allow that blood to redistribute. Roll those shoulders. And of course, before standing, we want to make sure that we're not feeling lightheaded. We want to make sure everything feels good before we go ahead and stand. Let's bring the hands together. Reaching up, inhale and exhaling out. So just check in with the body real quick. See how those hips feel. Maybe they feel a little bit more open and released. Core should feel a little bit stronger and posture should feel a little bit more open. So Pilates is really great for um, strengthening, of course, the torso and helping with mobility and posture. So I recommend incorporating a little Pilates into your routine every couple times a week if possible or just even a short sequence, five or 10 minutes a day. So thank you for joining me and keep moving and we'll see you soon. Parkinson's Daily Exercise with Danica. Thank you.